As a practical matter in working with buffers, it's important to recognize that um, not all buffers are, are equally effective at buffering the solution from changes in pH. So to begin this discussion, let's talk about the equation for buffer capacity, which we'll denote as beta. The buffer capacity is equal to negative dCa, and Ca is going to be the concentration of added of strong acid, uh, dPH. So as you add acid, the pH goes down, thus the, the negative sign. Uh, or dCb, concentration of strong base, uh, dPH. And uh, this expression is equal to 2.3 times the proton concentration. So it turns out that um, reasonably concentrated acid solutions make good buffers. So if you are at um, 1 molar HCl, it's a pretty good buffer because of the logarithmic nature of the pH scale. Similarly, uh, basic solutions, uh, let's say, 0.01 molar sodium hydroxide, which would be pH 12, turns out to be a pretty good buffer, um, plus any weak acid that you add in the form of a buffer. And I'm not going to go ahead and derive this. We, we already did this in class. But the buffer capacity due to a weak acid is equal to the Ka times the proton concentration uh, divided by the Ka plus the proton concentration squared. So this function is plotted in the following graph, and it's the blue line. And you'll notice I've got some wings. This, this line right here is the H plus serving as a good buffer. This wing is the sodium hydroxide serving as a buffer. And this peak in the middle is the weak acid serving as a buffer. The position of this peak is related to the Ka, or the pKa. So if I make the pKa 7, you notice this peak moves to the middle of my pH scale. If I increase the concentration, now I, right now I have a, a 10 millimolar buffer, but if I make it a 50 millimolar buffer, that peak goes up. We'll send it back to 10, just so where everything stays on scale. So as you increase the weak acid concentration, this spike in the buffer capacity goes up. As you change the pKa, it shifts to the right or to the left. So here we are with an example of the buffer capacity plotted as a function of pH uh, for strong acid, strong base, and a weak acid with a pK of about 5. Now the reason this plot is, is interesting is that the integral from any point on this plot to any other point is the amount of acid or base you need to change the pH. So if you're doing an experiment which is doing a producing acid as a consequence of the experiment and you want to buffer against that pH change you're better to produce an acid you're better to make a buffer where the pKa of your weak acid is slightly below the pH of your experiment um, so it's not always the case that you want to match the pKa to the pH of your experiment if I'm here and I'm adding acid through some reaction I've got to climb up and over this curve until the pH drops um, a significant amount. Conversely, if I was doing a reaction which was producing base, I might want to pick a pKa um, slightly more positive than my experimental pH because I'd have to climb up and over this curve um, to change the, the, P, the base. And climbing up and over the curve, of course, is the integral. And the bigger the integral, the more concentrated base or concentrated acid that I would need. So I have implemented this function to produce this curve in this part of the spreadsheet. Here's my pH going down. H plus is computed from the pH. OH is computed from Kw divided by H plus. And here's beta, 2.303 times the H plus times the OH times the K, the concentration of my weak base KAH plus over Ka plus H plus squared. Right. Now this integrate column is going to be the simple numerical integration over a quarter pH unit interval. So it's the, the amount of acid I would need to change the pH by a quarter pH or the amount of base that I need to change the pH by a quarter pH unit. And so let's assume we're going to start at pH 5 
and I want to increase the pH. I've just set this up so I put a 1 in here. And the red line showing up here is <clears throat> the amount of moles of concentrated base that I would need to add. So if I want to go from 5 to 5.25, I would need to add 1.3 millimoles of base. I want to go up another quarter pH unit. I need to add 2 millimoles, 2.3 millimoles. Okay, well, a little over 3 millimoles to get up to pH 5.75, and to get up to pH 6, I need to add um, almost uh, 3.6 millimoles of base. And what am I doing here? I'm increasing the weak base concentration, decreasing the weak acid concentration, and essentially we're moving along this, this curve. So I'm integrating the area under the curve, and that's what the red line is showing us. So that's if I'm adding base um, to a buffered solution at pH 5. What if I'm adding acid? So I'll go ahead and reset all of these. Set all those to zero. Let's go ahead and, and add acid. So I'll just add a little bit of acid, and I'll add a little more. And I'll add a little more. Now you'll notice it takes doesn't take as much acid to change the pH because I'm moving down this curve until I get to about a pH of 3.5, at which point the proton becomes a decent buffer. And now the amount of acid I need to increase the pH goes up because I'm working up this curve. So if I'm at pH 5 and I want to take the pH down to 2.75, I need to add 0 0.0065 moles of acid. So this spreadsheet was designed to give you a qualitative uh, understanding of how buffers work. Important points are that acids make good buffers. Strong acids make good buffers if they're at sufficient concentrations. Strong bases make good buffers if they're at sufficient concentrations. And weak acids and weak bases can be good buffers. Um, and the area underneath the buffer capacity curve is the amount of strong acid or strong base you would need to add to change the pH over the integral, over the range of the, the integral.